<laughs> you got gold on your teeth? Huh? You got a thingy on your teeth? Mm -hmm. Did the dentist do that? No, four of them. Do they just stick on? Um, these two have been on for since I was 39. And then these... They don't come off? They can come off, but they're on with the, um, the adhere stuff that you use for braces. Yeah. That's what it's on with. So, are they crystals? Are they yeah. diamonds? Yeah, they're crystals. Okay. I mean, if you have the finances to put into a real diamond, you can do it. Mm -hmm. But if that real diamond accidentally comes off, mm -hmm. that's your money. Right. Um, but they're Swarovski crystals. Mm -hmm. um, Swarovski crystals. Well, Swarovski yeah. crystals, thank you. So, if you have them done right... You have some idea? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. My cousin did this tooth, and I wore it for five years before I got these three added. So, they've been on that long. Do you have to go get touch-ups? Nope. Once they on, they on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like it though. That looks like you. Thank you. I'm telling you, everybody, for some reason, when I smile, they do. Yeah. <laughs> and one thing I was thinking about, you I know, didn't see them last time you were here. I don't know why, but I'm in your mouth today. <laughs> but, interest, <laughs> but look, interestingly, right? Um, I was thinking about it today, and yeah. I was like, yo, I need to invest in the tooth gym so that when I'm traveling and people ask me, boom, I got a kit right here. Let's go. I got to put yes, them in your mouth right exactly. now. Exactly. Okay. So. <laughs> If you, so, if we you, forgot the camera was rolling. <laughs> listen, if you, if you call any of that, so Javon and I, we've always taken from, and, and this this is what like entrepreneurs do. You're always thinking about how you can share your um, mm -hmm. stuff with people, especially if they're complimenting you on it. Um, so we just had a really short conversation about her teeth. And this was supposed before we got started because she smiled and I'm in her mouth and I see glistening. And it's just like somebody noticing the jewelry in my hair when I'm talking to them. It's the same thing. So um, I had questions. So since the cameras are always rolling here, um, you got to sit in on all that. My glasses are dirty. All right, go ahead, Miss Javon. Well, let's welcome. This is our, first of all, let's give a round of applause for ourselves for showing up. This is our second podcast that we are sharing. Um, right now, we don't really have an exact outline. We're just going to let it happen organically mm -hmm. and naturally. Um, I did have some kind of questions to keep us on topic in reference to, you know, just so we don't get so derailed and are able to give you all some type of information outside of just personal things. Um, That's all. I'm just trying to keep track of the time. The time right there. All right. Cool. Thank you. Five minutes okay, and got you, got you. Yep. <laughs> I'm like, woman, the time right there. She's helping me out with the tech. Go ahead. Okay, um, so hi, I'm Javon JC Sider Styles, or like for 180, where I do my life coaching business at. And then we have This is Phyllis Johnson. You guys know me as a video loctician where I share about hair care, specifically the locks in, in, in a healthy, natural way. Okay. So this is our second one. Um some questions that I had that mm -hmm. I wanted to start out with was... So you have questions for me? Us. Oh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> what took you into the hair industry? Whew. All right, so I was a police officer. I'm a retired police officer for 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew that I didn't want to do another 10 years. So a lot of my colleagues went 30, 35 years. I have a special needs son, and I wanted to do something different. I wanted to be home. He was going through the, you know, the schooling process. And um, I just made the decision that I need to be home. You know, I have a husband who works. Um, and so if I had to, I could curtail our expenses so that um, I could be home. But I didn't want to do that because I've always been entrepreneurial, always done something on the side. And so I figured I could just do it for myself and, and work on that. Okay. Mm-hmm. What about you? So for me, what took me into it was I was 12 years of age. Um, my mother sent me to live with my father. Excuse me. At the time when I was 12, I was used to my hair being done all the time because my, Who did it? my mother. Okay. My mother had three girls, mm -hmm. but she also raised her little sister. Um, so it was four girls that she had to do. So when I went to my father's house to live in another state, his number one thing was hairdressers was too much. So he wasn't sending me to the hairdressers. Mm -hmm. And the other thing was his wife wore a snapback, mm -hmm. which I was not wearing. snapback? When you roll all the rollers to the side, those pink rollers, yeah. roll them back, okay. backwards. 
Then you take them off in the morning and you comb you all the hair back. back and then you push, push it, it up like this. <laughs> and then you take the comb and you go like this. Yes. You know, yeah, that's that's a snapback. Okay. I'm not worth it. Right. Although I've had to work. Yes. I have pictures. I'm gonna have to bring pictures. But okay. anyway. That would be good. Pictures will also be good. Yeah, I, I have pictures of me with okay. a snapback at the age of twelve. Okay. So um that just wasn't my style. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how to navigate that situation new state new house new surroundings new people i was just mm -hmm. lost mm -hmm. um i went from wilmington delaware mm -hmm. to chester pennsylvania mm -hmm. and if anybody know anything about chester chester is very stylish mm -hmm. very yeah. stylish mm -hmm. not only with their clothing and their shoes but their hair mm -hmm. So when I went to Chester and I'm in the school and I'm in the hallways, I noticed these styles and these styles were amazing and they were styles so, that I didn't see in Delaware. So you were in junior high school then with the styles? I was in junior high. I was okay. in sixth grade, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And um, these styles were just beautiful and I, I've never seen them before. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, these people really show up mm -hmm. like this is a runway. Yeah. And I would go home. And I would do it. Mm -hmm. Whatever I saw on somebody, I would go home and I would do it. And that's how my career got started. Okay, so you, you found out you had a knack for styling even back then. I didn't know that that's what that was. Yeah. I just wanted my hair done because I was used to having my hair done. Right. So me going home and copying what I would see, mm -hmm. I ended up with like three styles in one week. Okay. Because I just became interested in the fact that, oh, I was able to recreate that style. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't taught. Mm -hmm. I just was pretty much like photographic memory. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, it just my business grew. Okay. And it grew because everybody was like, who does your hair? So you were your best um, client. Yes. And, and, and advertising. And advertising, yes. That's important. So I showed up with my hair done. Everybody, who did your hair? Mm -hmm. And my whole thing was, oh, I did it. Mm -hmm. And they, the, the next question was, oh, can you do mine? Right. And I said... Sure can. Mm -hmm. And then the best question was, How much does it cost? What? <laughs> what? Yes. At the age of 12? Yes. Back yes. in what? 1991? Here I go. $10? Yes. You want to pay me? I've, done, I've sat in somebody, I did, um, what was it? Um, the, the, the small braids or the box flat. braids. Was Micro. I don't know what, what, what the beads were. Just plaques with beads okay. all over. So okay. it could have been cornrows, could have been whatever. But I would be over somebody's house all day long and be real happy when they gave me a ten dollar bill. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. It was a simple small sum. Yeah. Ooh, having a flash. Sorry. Mm. I'm so sorry. I'm really having a flash. Okay. Reading notes to keep us on track. I'm having a serious moment. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah, girl. So. What I did was, um, that's how I got started in my mm -hmm. business. In sixth grade, at the age of 12, I started being behind a chair, doing other people's hair. Okay. And it started with my peers, mm -hmm. and then it became their parents, then it became their aunts and uncles, mm -hmm. and, blah, 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 and then my business grew. Mm -hmm. Now, when I first started, I not only styled hair, but I also did micros and I did box braids. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then through my... Did you do the extensions with that too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, through my journey of the micros and box braids back in the 90s, I decided to let that go mm -hmm. and just focus on just styling because my personal reason why I decided to just give up the braids and then just go into styling was because it allowed me the freedom to create different canvases in one day. Versus when you do braids, you have one person for the whole day. And at the time where I was, I like creating the different canvases in one day. Okay. So that means all the different clients that I had, I like giving them different styles. Like that's what was, that's what was very rewarding right. to me at the time. Mm -hmm. um, versus serving one client yeah. per day and right, so yeah, so, so what you did was... Uh, you realize that that was your, that's how you spoke creatively, mm -hmm. okay? Yes, and you yes. didn't want to be boxed into one certain type of thing. Mm -hmm. And you were able to display all those different modes of your creativity. Yes. And that's what helped you grow your, your business. Yes. Although, how long have you been in business in the hair industry? Uh, 23 years. Okay, so I'm 33 years in the mm -hmm. hair industry, right? Mm -hmm. So I did not take it seriously until maybe eight years later. Mm -hmm. 
So for and, eight years, I just played. Yeah. I just had fun. It wasn't no goal or. Mm -hmm. It was just fun. Had money in your pocket. What? Do do hair when you want to do what? or get hair when you needed money. That type Man, of thing. Man, listen, I was okay. I was sixteen years old pushing a Cadillac. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm talking about a white Cadillac mm -hmm. with a maroon like your glasses. You was driving them? What? Is that what it's pushing me? Yes, okay. driving, okay. pushing <laughs> the language. <laughs> All right. So I was pushing a Cadillac okay. and I was You I, had a picture of that? I have pictures. I, yes. I want to see yes. her pushing her Cadillac. Yes. Well, it wasn't my Cadillac. Oh, okay. It was my gotcha. father's Cadillac. Okay, gotcha. Right. So he had a white, it was a Cadillac DeVille. Mm -hmm. It was a, um, I'm not sure exactly, but I, it was big. Mm -hmm. It was white. It had a maroon roaster top. And his job supplied him with a vehicle to and from work. So his Cadillac just sat. Yeah. So I got my license and then he let me drive it. Okay. So I was a young yeah, girl and I uh -huh. was paid. Okay. You know, I yep. was paid. And driving a and Cadillac. driving a Cadillac. Right. So I really had the look mm -hmm. that I was close at right. sixteen. Okay. And it was so She's easy. gonna be using these words on me. Okay. <laughs> Flossing. Okay, yeah, okay. Flossing. Right. Flossing means, okay, so I basically was showing up looking like I had all my stuff together, like okay. a grown woman, but okay. I was only 16 okay, years old. Okay, got you. All right. Yeah, there you go. It's kind of showing off. That's what you're doing, right? Well, it wasn't intentional. Yeah, I know. It, it was, it just, that's how the universe blessed me. So okay. I, I gladly yeah, accept the blessings okay. and I move okay. forward with it. So you like this. What? Yeah, okay. Listen, it was so, it was so crazy that... I'm going to share this story. It was so crazy that this um, girlfriend of mine, her grandmother would not allow her to leave the house with the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. What did you do that for? No, she didn't want to be around you? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Her grandmother would not allow her to leave the house with the vehicle unless I was with her. Okay. So her grandma would only give me the keys. Okay. So right. she wanted to go somewhere. Yeah. She had to call me and right. ask me to come over, talk to her grandma, mm -hmm. get the keys, right. and then we'll take the car and go work. I was a responsible individual. Well, that's, that's my next question. So she I saw you as responsible. What? Okay. Out of the whole group that mm -hmm. I, I ran with, yes, I was the one that was paying bills and, you know, yeah. basically like an adult. Yeah. That's yeah. so young. Yeah. Yeah. So right. quite interesting. So how long, um, or what are some of your best stories, or do you have a story? I know, long time, a lot of stories. Uh, I don't know. Well, I mean, you want to Well, what took you into stuff? hair? Well, you, you answered that in reference to your retirement and stuff, but what took well, you more specifically into Sister Rocks? Well, I was really, I've always been more of a, a natural type of person with natural products. Um, went through the whole hair gamut with the perm, the jerry curl, and all that. Um, but I was really attracted to those sisters who either had locks, mm -hmm. regardless of what kind of locks they were, and sister locks weren't popular at the time, um, or had their hair shaved off, like Jovan. And I think what it was for me is that they exuded confidence, because they wasn't caring what everybody else was doing with their hair. Um, and, and also, a lot of times with that, their makeup was on point, it, it, whether it was just a little bit of mascara and some lip gloss, um, and they just had that vibe, you know, they wasn't, they was going against what everybody else was doing. And that's what I liked. And that's, um, and that's kind of, I just, not that I modeled myself, but that just spoke to my spirit. And, and after a while, I, I didn't want to do the chemicals anymore. And I started looking for, I even had uh, salons turn me away because I had perm in my hair because they didn't know how to deal with that. And they said that I had to, take, you know, cut all my hair off. And so when I found out with Sister Locks, you didn't really have to do that. And after I did some more research, I wanted to do that. So I waited five months before I had two or three inches of hair, cut off all the perm, and then started that process with the locks. And I had found, before that, I had found this uh, advertisement, the sister locks in a magazine. I was in a salon. I tore it out, folded it up <laughs> discreetly, and put it in my purse. And that stayed in my purse, and I would take it out and look. And I was like, if I ever got a chance to have locks, these are the locks that I want to have. And I would just carry that paper around and I started doing some research and looking up locks, not locks, but it was dreadlocks back then. Dreadlocks, sister locks, very little, little mm -hmm. stuff. There were two major websites for dreadlocks and both of them were for white people with locks. I was just really, really disappointed. So back then, 20 something plus years ago, there wasn't, it wasn't as prevalent is mm -hmm. and prolific as it is now with the information you guys are able to get offline. Um, 
Yeah. So what else? So I shared with you how I went into the hair industry, period, right? Mm -hmm. You shared how you went into the hair industry, but how I went into the role of being a sister lock, um, lactician was because Did I, I? No, you didn't install my first set. I have, I've had four sets of sister locks. No, but you already did, did. I didn't encourage you to get to go to the sister lock place. Mm -hmm. Okay, I met you after my husband. Well, my ex husband already installed them. Okay. Oh, girl. Go <laughs> no, we gonna no. share that. Okay. We gonna share that. Okay, we are gonna share that story. Okay, so let me show you how. Let me share how this started. So how this started was I had went to this concert. Um, it was an old concert, like not the OJ's, the mm -hmm. not the, the Temptations or somebody. It was somebody. It was an older group, well, classic group. Um, and we were in Philly, wanted to go see them. And it was me and two sisters that I, I, I rode with. And when we were in there, we were like signing in before you go into the venue. And this sister walked in. And when she walked in, she had this chiffon covering over her head because she was in the Nation of Islam. So she had this chiffon covering over her head. And when she walked in, you were, it's almost like instant love. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I didn't see nothing else mm -hmm. but her mm -hmm, hair. Mm -hmm. And I went over to her and introduced myself and I said, excuse me, I'm a hairstylist. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't know what's in your hair, mm -hmm. but I need to know everything about your hair. Mm -hmm. And I said, can I touch it? Can I? And she was like, yes, still have her number till today. Mm -hmm. Still will ring her phone was till it today. Was It was Sister Lux. Okay. All right. And her name was Raven. Mm -hmm. She was in Philly. And she said, when you go home, Google Sister Lux. Mm -hmm. And I went home, and I remember I walked through the door, and I was like, told my husband, listen, I know, because I had been transitioning out of chemicals and to natural, but I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to yeah. do with my natural yeah. hair. So when I got home, I told my husband, um, I know what I want to do with my hair. It's something called sister locks. And Googled it, and I talked about it so much that before I even took the class, even paid for the class, mm -hmm. My firstborn was six. Well, she wasn't even six. She was about five. Mm -hmm. She asked me, well, mom, can I get locks? Mm -hmm. Can I get these sister locks? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I don't know. I have to take the class and I'll right, find out right, and I'll let right. you know. So that's how why I ended up, well, my husband ended up gifting me the course. Wow, but okay. he himself also took the, the course. course. Mm -hmm. We went to Elizabeth, New Jersey, and that's where we spent four days. Mm -hmm. We stayed in a hotel. Four days then. And we had the sister lock experience. Um, now, how you and I became yes. together was after that whole thing. Did we know each other then? No. Okay. So this is, okay, this is how it happened on my end. <laughs> my husband was just moving too slow. Mm -hmm. He was just moving too slow. We were getting into it. This mm -hmm. was a, a situation that was going on for like two weeks. I said, babe, this can't be. We need to do something. I need you to speed it up. And he had like a section left. And for some reason, that section felt like it was an eternity. She, 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 tricked, me, she tricked me into doing the hair. Like it was an eternity. I was like, no, it's only a section. Anyway, I go to the bathroom one day and I'm fed up. And I pull out the yellow pages, mm -hmm. the actual phone book, okay. and I'm flipping through the pages because was this, I in there? this is before oh, the social wow. media yeah, blew yeah. up and became what it was. Yeah. So I'm flipping through the pages because Imani's 23, and then I, I saw her when she was about six. So we're talking about over 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I'm flipping through the yellow pages, and I came across this ad that says "Lock Coils and Twists." Yes, wow. And I'm like. I don't know if this woman does it, but yeah. I'm gonna call her anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So I called Miss Phyllis up and I'm like, hey, can you retire my locks? Da -da 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 -da. And after chasing her, yeah, literally. Okay, everybody knows about that. Go ahead. I finally <laughs> was able to get an appointment, and I mean, this is it. And listen, before, so we got the appointment. I'm talking to her, we got the appointment. I don't remember the conversation at all. What I do remember is before, when we, great, we said bye, I was ready to hang up. She said, Miss Phyllis, Miss Phyllis, Miss Phyllis. And so I put the phone back up to the ear. She, uh, she says, um, I, I think I, I should tell you that the back of my hair is not done. <laughs> it was a section. That's the section she's talking about. <laughs> so I said, okay, we'll take a look at it and we'll just dis discuss it later. Yeah, she got me. So she comes, <laughs> when she comes, I'm at, I am open up the door and I see her locks. Her locks are gorgeous, but they are freaking tiny. And it looked like somebody took a fine, a fine tip magic marker and just drew them on. 
That's how tiny they were. They were so skinny. Oh. They were beyond extremely So it skinny. wasn't a retightening. It was a, a, a co completing an install and retightening the rest of it. Mm -hmm. And I said, she freaking got me. And so this is how over the years I... <laughs> Wait, before you go over the years, go back into like the first, second visit. You missing a part. Go ahead. You don't remember what happened on the second visit? No, what happened on the second visit? Hold on. Hurry up. Cause we, we ready. We ready to be done. On the second visit, I really had to chase you because you didn't think that I was going to continue. So you coming? Coming? Yeah. And getting my hair done, um, because of the time and the cost. Right. And I surprised you. Yeah, you had to keep reinforcing that. Don't worry about my pocket. Right. No, I'm like, what you got yeah, my pocket yeah, for? Yeah. Yeah. Don't count my pockets. Just take yeah. my point. We can take my money. Yes, yes. That's basically what she said. And you and she was like, "Well, I don't think that you're going to pay all this money to get your hair done." I wasn't like that, Javon. You did. <laughs> you, did. You, you was like, "Well, I, didn't, I mean, I was like, oh, this girl's not going to pay this. Continue to pay this price." Plus, she was, plus she was young. Yeah, and I was like, "Woman, book me." Yeah. And see, you didn't I know. I don't remember that. Yeah, you didn't it. know my background and yeah. know that yeah. I had money from twelve yeah. years of age. Yeah. So when you're talking about cost when it comes to hair, I understand that a hundred percent. Nobody has to truly ever explain yeah. that to me because I understand. Yeah. So that's the first and second. Yeah. Reason. Yeah. I misjudged her. I didn't want to waste my time. Yeah. yeah. You don't want me to waste your time. <laughs> go ahead, girl. Have I wasted it? No. We sixteen years. Yes, I know. I know. <laughs> okay, so that's that explains mm -hmm. how we met. Yeah. And how and then from there it just organically grew. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But then, but then there's a point, like, Javon, when things are going on with her and her life, Go ahead. it affects, she She wants to cleanse herself, and part of that cleansing a lot of times just cutting off Shaving them off. But one of the issues that, okay, that was your perception, right? And that's mm -hmm. accurate. Mm -hmm. But let me explain that. On my end, each child, each, after each child was born, I experienced hormonal alopecia. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to deal with the hair falling out mm -hmm. and trying to take care of myself, trying to take mm -hmm. care of the baby. Mm -hmm. So like for instance, with my third child, my whole front came out. Okay. And after it started coming back in like mm -hmm. a buzz, I just shaved it all off mm -hmm. because I didn't have the patience to deal you with it. I have to deal with all the other clients and mm -hmm. their issues. And right. I don't feel like dealing with mine. So I would shave mine off. So that's why you would look at it as a cleansing where mm -hmm. it was like, I just didn't have the patience to okay. deal with myself. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I have four sets behind all of that. Four sets? I have four sets. This is and I put in how many? One. Just, nah. Well, I finished completing the one. Okay. And remember, you were going through a thing with, something. you was like, I gotta give you those. Okay. And then you install them after I key. Right. That's, that's the that's one. That's two. Tool. Okay. That's two. What mm -hmm. else? I guess that's it. Okay. Was that another one? I don't recall. I, 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 gotta, I gotta think of who installed them. Yeah, I think I think I did at least two full installs with you. Oh, okay. Well, Why don't you call me up crying like one o'clock in the morning? Did I? Did I? I just want to know if you still do locks. I, I don't care where you've been doing it. I want you to get me in, but I gotta get that. I gotta get these locks off my head. And you had already shaved. She had already shaved her head, so she knew I was gonna say yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I don't recall my. that. You don't okay. Know, okay. You was in some kind of way. Oh, well, you know what? Was this after a baby? I don't know. That sounds like the time frames after a child when I'm in that such... But now that we know, like, what all that was, yeah, it took three yeah. children to, yeah, to, to, figure that out. to figure it out. But yeah. now we understand all that scatteredness yeah. after a child with me, what all that was. Yeah. And that's what it sounds like, where yeah. it was just so much uncertainty. It was so much pain. It was just it was just a lot. I didn't know what to do. I with. think I did two two installs on you, plus the, the first one where I just did that to the back. Okay. So that's, I have to go back and look at all the pics. Let's see. All right. All right, anything else? Um, let's see. So I oh, I, why did you decide to get sister locks installed on you? I, I told you, I just loved them. And nobody else had them. And it was it was more in line with my natural self. So yeah. Okay. And the fact that I you know I had to do a lot of products mm -hmm. um, and things like that. But I also knew after I got them in, I knew that I had to become a consultant. And so I went through that process of learning how to do them. Um, uh, however, all the marketing and building my business with the sister locks was all me. Was it was not them at all, um, and that's another whole story. 
So the reason so, why yeah. I wanted to talk to ask first that I seen her hair. He gifted me a class. And then after that, I, oh, but my reason for actually getting locks mm -hmm. was because I didn't have to worry about doing my hair on a daily yes. basis yes. because I was too busy servicing yes. other people. Yes. So it was a hairstyle for me that I I didn't have to attend to as much. Yeah. And, I wanted and it to worked share. for me. Yeah. I wanted to share because now I had tassel and go hair like mm -hmm. for the first time. Yeah. And it was the first time I felt like I had good hair. And okay. you have no bad hair base. I always say that. No bad. I say even a bad hair day is a good day. A good Great. hair day when you got locks. It don't have to be sister Great. locks, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and then after a while, so also in when I'm talking to people or when I'm having my consultation, if they're if they're asking me certain questions or expressing certain things where I know they're not ready yet, and mm -hmm. I won't mm -hmm. do your hair. You know, I'll offer them something else or to see somebody else, but I won't do it. Let me ask you this. What, are, what is, like, one of the big telltale signs that you feel as though is an instant indicator that that, that, that person's not, not ready. ready? Can you comb them out? That's the number one question you that, get? That, can you comb them out? Um, my, number one, my number one navigation of a red flag with a client is if the first question is how much do they cost? But that's a legitimate. That's a, it's. I'm not saying it's, it's not a valid question. But that's. But that's a. That's. A, it, it, it is a valid question. But that's a question that I don't entertain until uh, we have our consultation because the value is not there. Correct. So they're and comparing it to everything else. That's so, why I'm like the, the if you're leading mm -hmm. with the cost and the cost is going to mm -hmm. sway your decision. Then that tells me right there you don't understand the journey of it. Right. Yeah, but that may not be their fault though. So that's why, because I'm gonna when, when when I talk to somebody, all that. So I don't I don't mind them asking me about the price because I oh, can yeah, answer I that. Price. Yeah, I can. I, I can. But it's when they're when they're saying like you know can can you um can you permit? Can I wear my wig? Da da da. You oh, know those types. I don't of get things. those questions. Yeah. I don't, yeah, get, those so I get those. I don't so get those. I don't get those questions. I might take a little bit more time as far as the education piece and then see. How we're moving forward but if I, there's only been a few people not that many because a lot of times they've already been on, on a you know on the mm -hmm. forums and stuff and they kind of know they, they want it or at least get get their questions answered but you know if i had some some experiences with some women who i knew they weren't ready but still wanted me to do their hair and i was like you know i've you know. i've had a, one thing one lady who's jumping out at me i think she was in oregon she was really from delaware but she moved to oregon um and she came to me and get her install. Mm -hmm. But before she came, my whole thing was, who's going to service you when you go back home? Yeah. And her whole thing was, oh, I can do it, this and the other. And I said, listen, I don't want to set you up for failure. Yes. It's not a problem installing. The problem, the, the issue will arise if you don't have no one to properly maintenance them. Right. Um, she came to me several times in between her visits to Delaware. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the visits... I just ended up hearing from a family member who came and got her hair done. And mm -hmm. she was like, oh, yeah, she passed away. And I was like, oh. Yeah. Why did you bring that up? I'm, no, I'm. I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, expect I, that. I was sharing that because she's way in Oregon. Yeah. So my thing is make sure you have someone that if you are journeying to yeah. get them installed, mm -hmm. when you return home, someone is there that's qualified to your standards yeah. for you to be able to help serve yeah and i and i do the same thing i i, I that I, that's one of the things that's on the table um because i get a lot of people that travel to me from other states to get the install because mm -hmm. the install is going to be mm -hmm. we do great bases for installs mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. where anybody who's who's worth their salt should be able to follow our patterns or whatever what's the uh furthest uh client ever oh. journey to you i don't know but See, we keep talking. You keep asking these questions. Going to lead to something. We want to keep this down. I know. We this last question. Okay. What, what's the? Problem? I don't know. So I have I, right now. I have I have people that come from Pennsylvania, Virginia, Maryland. Um, I, there was somebody who there was they were African sisters who came here and they, and they usually spend the night and all that kind of stuff. I can't remember where they were from, but mm -hmm. they were they were the furthest. I can't remember from where. The furthest I had a client from was from the UK. Oh my. Okay. Yeah. That wasn't the one you was. Hair That's hair. all I did. I she came all the way to me just for a haircut. <laughs> no, I haven't had anybody come from abroad. She came all the way to me from just for a haircut uh, from the UK. Yep. See, yeah, that sparked some other questions, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, I, make sure you write it down. Yeah. But yeah, so <laughs> that that whole in, um experience was quite interesting. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> But we're gonna go ahead and we talked. We talked before you did her too, didn't we? Or, or it was afterwards. 
Because I was telling you something about... Which, I don't know. All right, we'll, we'll talk later. Um, see, we, we, when we get together, it's so, it's so much of a sisterhood and we giggle and all that, that it's, it's 16 years of information that we're trying to give y'all yeah. within 30 minutes. So a lot of times when we're jumping around, it, it's hard to, to stay the course when you have 16 years of information yeah. that we're just trying to share. Yeah. So this is a light something like that we're doing yeah um so don't take it so seriously when it comes nope. to our little imperfections don't that we're they all over the place yeah and we know we, we are, are. <laughs> we are <laughs> and, uh, it, and it will evolve okay so i think we probably should, should name this how we got started maybe did you already do that yet oh you just want to name this video yeah. how we got started yeah okay yeah that could be all right how we got started there you go that's the name okay <laughs> Until next time, this She's is... good at this one. Go ahead. I love seeing you do this. Go ahead. <laughs> Until next time, this is Jovan, JC Styler Styles. And this is Phyllis, the video lactician. And we just want to say welcome back home to sisterhood. And until next... Okay, go ahead. This is good. This is good. I just want to say welcome back to sisterhood. And we want to be a part of your journey. So please comment, like, and share, and subscribe, and all the other good stuff that you know they be saying. But This is why I need a young <laughs> So right. You sign off very well. Peace and love and light, everyone. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>